What's up everyone? Today I'm going to talk about the E3 press conferences and I'm going to start off with Sony. So I'm starting off with Sony because I'm sure a lot of you have seen my unboxing for the PS3 and I've always been a Sony fan so I'm always interested to see what they're doing especially since I own their console now. And so I'm going to start off with the good then I'll get to the bad and then the ugly and the ugly for this one was pretty ugly it was it was pretty painful to watch but I'll get to that so first the good I'm pretty sure all of you could agree with me on this one that the good was definitely the new IP by Quantic Dreams it's called Beyond Two Souls it's the game with Ellen Page in it it's uh, the one that you may have seen that had the super good graphics and it's still just for PS3. It's not it's not a PS4 game or anything like that. But yeah, it has Ellen Page in it, which everyone thought was in The Last of Us because the girl whose name is Ellie, I think. Uh she looks kind of like Ellen Page, but Naughty Dog changed her a little bit. Um but this one is actually Ellie and I don't know much about it, but from what I could tell it was much more action oriented and it's still very it's an emotional game I'm pretty sure that um, what's the word you know scenes where you can actually make a choice I'm sure those will appear Quantic Dreams really likes those kinds of that kind of gameplay I guess so they would be interested in doing that in this game and it it looks really good uh, graphically and then the story and then Ellen Page she's awesome she was an in inception everyone loves that and uh yeah that's all I have to say about that so that's a good thing next good thing was uh the last of us all of us have seen this maybe not all but a lot of us have seen this earlier earlier let's see i think it was at the VGAs last december that's when it premiered and it's it's gorgeous too. Um, I wouldn't s actually I would say it looks a little bit better than Beyond Two Souls, um, mainly because Beyond Two Souls had the really close up views that you saw in Heavy Rain, but this one had a lot of gritty texture to it, and so graphically it looked better because of that, if that makes sense. And but that's not it. It's not all graphics. The gameplay demo that they showed off in the press conference was phenomenal. The AI was great. Uh, Hideo Kojima, the one who makes, let's see, Metal Gear Solid, he said it was the best game in the show. I don't agree with that. I think it's the second best. But I will get to the best one in another press conference video. But yeah, gameplay, AI, it was all fantastic. Really good. Uh, that's easily a day one purchase for me. Naughty Dog has been churning out some hits recently. Um, I've always been a fan of them. Uh, they have Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter. I didn't play those, but I mean they're pretty good. Uncharted and Ratchet and Clank, I think. I might be wrong about that. And then the next one, the next good thing, Assassin's Creed 3. This showed up in Sony as well as Ubisoft's press conference. And this one showed a little bit different stuff. And different by different I mean really awesome, as in not something that's in a lot of games. So Assassin's Creed 3, set in America, obviously, there's a lot of naval warfare, right? Because you got the big Atlantic Ocean, you got boats all over the place going to and fro to uh, England and America, back back and forth. And, um, and so now you can actually command those boats. You got, you know, the, the steering wheel. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. I should know. But it's, like, it's basically the steering wheel and you can... You can turn it, and then you can fire all the cannons on the side of the boat. So it's it's really cool because you got to turn the boat. You know, if you want to fire, just turn it right. 
pretend this is the steering wheel. Turn it right, and then you got you got your cannons over here, and as long as you're kind of your side is facing the other boat, you just go ahead and shoot, shoot all your cannons out, and then that boat will be destroyed, catch on fire, do something. It really seems like something that should be in an awesome Pirates of the Caribbean video game, but that doesn't really exist. But it, it looked really good graphically, and gameplay is new. It really seems like they've really emphasized the variety that they've had in the newer games. I wasn't a big fan of Revelations. Brotherhood, I liked it. And Assassin's Creed 2, I think, was the best in the series. But I think Assassin's Creed 3 has a chance, has a good chance, to beat it. So now on to the bad. This is for stuff that's not good, but it's not really bad. It's just kind of, eh, kind of left a lot to be desired. Especially this first one, the Vita games. Sony pushed Vita last last year, I think. They pushed a lot because it hadn't released yet, I don't think. And they wanted to show off games. I can't really, I can't remember how much we knew about it, but I don't, I, we may have known all the stuff about it, or we may have not known much. I don't remember, because it was a year ago. But uh, this year they did not focus on games, and the ones that they did were all kind of spin offs. So the two that I can remember are Assassin's Creed Liberation, which was the one that came in the, the, uh, PS Vita white bundle, the one that's white. I think it's called like polar white or something, something to do with polar bears because they're always white. And then you had a Black Ops, Black Ops spin-off game to go along with Black Ops 2. And that's great. It's great that you have those games because it shows that you want to have the Vita for the hardcore gamer. But I wish they had more emphasis on the cross-platform play with uh, the Smash Bros. knockoff game in the Vita. So I wish they had shown the Vita version of that. Um, I, I feel like there's a lot of potential there, especially with the Wii U and Xbox Smart Glass. That, that's similar kind of stuff, and I feel like Sony didn't capitalize on that. Maybe they will next year. I think they will, actually. Um, because they kind of hinted at the fact that this is this is technology that needs a little bit of time to develop for their developers, and um, I don't know. Maybe they I know they had it in mind when they made the Vita, but I didn't think they thought the Wii U would really take it to a whole new level. But there's potential there. But but I'm still gonna say these two games and just the whole PSP Vita or PS Vita lineup. It was it was bad. But it wasn't really bad. And then... That was it. That's all for bad. And now to the ugly. The ugly, ugly, ugly. <sighs> God. This was, this was really ugly. This was the worst moment. This year. Last year. Year after... Year before that. Year before that. Ever since I've I've been watching E3 press conferences, this was really bad. Okay, maybe not that bad, but it's Wonder Book. It is the augmented reality game for the PlayStation Move, which also they didn't emphasize enough. They emphasized that a lot last year with like SOCOM or something, or maybe that was the year before, but they didn't do much on that. But anyways, this was their only effort. It was terrible. Basically, imagine the most boring idea ever. Reading a book in a video game. Think about that one. So imagine games like Skyrim. Skyrim. There are books in there, and you can read them. But imagine the point of the game was to read the books. And to kind of flail your hand around, doing little wand motions that's what this was and 
I would think that the people that like to read books would do it in real life. You know, they open up a book, and they're like, hmm, words, and they read it. But this was, it was, it was an interesting concept. I will give them that. Uh, basically, you play with a book, turn it into a video game, make it interactive, make it pop out on the screen. It's augmented reality. Uh, they really have pushed that recently. But this was very pitiful. It was part of a partnership with J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter and Pottermore. Or I don't know if it had anything to do with Pottermore. But it was, it was in that. That game was called Book of Spells. And basically you could wave your wand around. It's pretty much like uh, the sorcery game that they showed off, I think, two years ago. And it finally released like a month ago or something. It's, it's kind of like that, but it's not action. You don't move around. You're just, it's all augmented reality. You open up this big plastic or whatever book. It's a blank screen with AR codes or something on there. Might not. But it will put the stuff on the book. Be like dragons. Stuff. Stuff goes on the book. Not sure what, but stuff. Something. Goes on the book. And so you play with it. And that's it. it. Seemed kind of boring. It was. It was 15 minutes of utter pain watching. Not fun. If you did not watch this part, you are lucky. You are very lucky. But I was watching it live on um, game trailers or whatever. And it was, it was pretty bad. So that's it for Sony. I'm going to give my grade. And I'm going to try to wrap up why. I'm going to say a B minus. B minus. And a B minus because they had two good new IPs. Even though one of them was not really new because we already knew about it. But two good ones from Quantic Dreams and Naughty Dog. Both very good developers. And then Assassin's Creed 3 showed off new gameplay. But that's Ubisoft's game. So it's not really, doesn't factor in much for Sony. But they do have exclusive DLC for the PS3 version of Assassin's Creed 3, so make sure you watch out for that. And then the bad... The Vita games didn't really play into this a whole lot, but the, the Wonder Book and just the lack of a whole lot more. And the Smash Brothers knockoff. It's a B-. It's the best I can do. Pawn Stars. It's the best I can do. B-. So, I'll see you guys in the next video.